Hi, everyone. I'm Steve McGee, and I'm based in San Luis Obispo, California, otherwise known as SLO. Uh, I'm a reliability advocate at Google. Uh, I was an SRE for about 10 years. I worked on things like mobile search, Android, Google Fiber, YouTube, and Compute Engine. Uh, then I left Google. Uh, I became a cloud customer. Um, I helped one company move from on-prem to the cloud, did the whole modernized thing. I learned a lot about the difference between operations inside and outside of Google. Uh, I then returned to Google as a solutions architect where I helped design adoption patterns for Anthos. Uh, I helped customers with things like DevOps and SRE systems like CICD, incident response, risk management, capacity planning, even cluster upgrades. Uh, and now, um, like I said, I'm reliability advocacy um, where I do things like this. Uh, I also help internal um, Google platform developers uh, better understand what customers are really looking for uh, in their cloud provider. Um, so what I'm hoping you'll get out of this is um, learning how to use SLOs um, and maybe even how not to use SLOs. And I'm thinking, or I'm hoping you already know what an SLO is. Um, and a little heads up, uh, there will be math in this, hence the title. Um, it specifically, we'll be talking about a little bit of probability. Okay. So uh, when I was a cloud customer, the one thing I wasn't able to accomplish actually was introducing SLOs. Uh, we struggled not only with the concept, but like the implications of our choices uh, on a large, poorly understood stack of connected services managed by disparate teams. Uh, what if we chose the wrong SLO? Uh, were the other teams like going to not be able to meet our expectations? Were they going to get mad at us? Like what, what, were gonna, what was going to be the outcome of, of choosing like this very special number? Um, since then, I've actually helped a lot of teams go through this exact same struggle. Um, I found a few helpful guidelines that I hope can help you uh, get through this a lot smoother. Uh, first off, uh, you want to set the expectations for customer experience. That's the most important part. Um, it's already covered in pretty much any SLO guide. Uh, and it's probably been covered in this conference already. Um, so great, go do that. Um, your, your users deserve the right level of service that they expect. And you deserve to know if you're meeting that expectation. Uh, is it available enough? Is it fast enough? Is it complete enough? Uh, just start with that. Don't expect it to be perfect. Um, like it says here, uh, meet their expectations and don't expect perfection. Okay, so uh, let's get deeper than that. Like, uh, yeah, great, Steve. Uh, meet, meet customers' expectations. But, but like we have this whole big system. Um, it's more complicated than that. Yeah, I know, totally. Um, what if you don't own your entire stack? Uh, how do you deal with that? Uh, when your sister teams and acquisitions and infrastructure providers and like, what about the, I don't know, the power grid and network links and like cooling and do it. Well, how do we, how do we think about all this stuff? Um, well, well, here's one way to think about it. Um, obviously this is not what we're going to go with. This is what we call the, the naive math. Um, do we really expect layers and layers to get stronger and stronger as we go down? Um, like it says here, do we have to have, add each layer? Does it have to add like a nine? What if we have many, many layers? That, that would be pretty pretty crazy, you know? Um, so is this even possible? Uh, clearly not. Like this, this can't be the way that things work. Um, so, so what's going on? Uh, I call this the pyramids or triangles or something like that. Um, the, the classic IT strategy was on the left, which is basically like make a very large cold room, uh, fill it with very expensive computers, give it lots of redundant power and network supplies, uh, never let it get it too warm, never turn it off. Uh, put very expensive hardware in there that will never, you know, fall apart. Uh, put very specific software in there that has been tested extremely well and will never make any mistakes. Um, and then like lock the door and never touch it again. So what's wrong with this? Uh, why are, you know, it works for the airlines. Why, why shouldn't everyone else do this? Um, it turns out that uh, things like scalability and flexibility are missing. Uh, and then security is mostly hard because if you can't have uh, flexibility, you can't adapt to new threats. So that's, that's kind of a bummer. Um, so Things like adding machines to this perfect room, really tricky, uh, really expensive, causes outages. Um, adding features to this perfectly tested software, super tricky. Uh, you introduce more functionality, you have to test it again, slows things down, causes problems. So overall, we call this approach component level reliability. The expectation is that everything is up as much as possible and you're aiming for total availability. Uh, generally speaking, you also tend to scale up here. Uh, you, you make bigger and bigger machines shaped how they were before, only you know faster. Um, so now we have this other model. This is this cloud thing came along. Um, in this case, what we're doing is actually we're using uh, what, what we like to call SLO-based reliability 
at many layers. Um, you can think of this as like probabilistic reliability, or um, I think the, the best term is actually aggregate availability. Um, if you can work to ensure a consistent level of imperfect reliability, you get a lot of flexibility and scalability, which then gives you more security and overall more reliability. So if you're aiming for 99.9%, .9%, you're not aiming for 100, you, you get to have a lot more flexibility in, in what you can pull off at the bottom of the stack. So if you notice the bottom of the stack here is like the small point and the top is bigger. It's upside down. It's a triangle. What a metaphor. Okay. So what else has changed in the meantime? Uh, systems architecture have gotten more complicated as well. So we've seen the rise of services-oriented architecture and microservices. So we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of their virtues and not just shuffling these new things onto the old uh, systems, right? At this point, uh, we have a distributed system. Mm, great. Uh, this means things are getting complicated. Uh, if you've heard the quote from Dr. Leslie Lamport, a distributed system is one in which the failure of a computer you don't even know existed can render your own computer unusable. Uh, if that rings a bell, you are in the right talk. So uh, now we have these different capabilities like horizontal and vertical scaling, sharding and partitioning of data, and corresponding replication and load balancing. All of this makes it much harder to even reason about our system. So what do we do? Okay, on to the math. Uh, real quick, we're going to talk about probability. Um, let's think about some, some basic uh, rolling of dice. Um, and there's going to be multiple size dice, hence, hence the picture. Um, Let's think of uh, rolling a number one as an outage. So if we roll a six-sided die, the probability of not having an outage is five divided by six, uh, 0.833. This looks a lot like an SLO. Let's use it. Uh, this is essentially our availability SLO. So this is the expected ratio of rolls that we consider good or happy. Like it's a, a happy customer is one who doesn't get a one, for example. Um, and this is this was what you would measure over time, like over N different rolls. Cool? Okay, so if we rolled... Uh, four dice every time, the probability changes. Um, so now every, every time you see one one of those four, uh, that's an outage. So in this case, we get a availability of 0 0.482, which is not as good. Um, and finally, if we use many-sided dice, so in this case, two six-sided dice, one 10-sided, one 20-sided dice, um, you have a measly 0 0.59 SLO. So the moral here is the more dice you add to the throw, uh, you'll never do as well as the worst case of a single throw. In this case, throwing one single-sided die would have gotten you uh, 0.833, but we actually ended up with 0.59, which is not as good. Okay, uh, I hope we got all that, but really the most important thing is the stuff in red, obviously. Okay, so here we go. Um, some services all in a row. So if we have these services that depend on each other in like a straight line, um, this is... Not really using a load balancer, really. It's just saying that we have services that depend on each other. Therefore, we have to um, measure their S low as uh, 0.99 times 0.99 times 0.99.99. So that's uh, the SLO, SLO raised to the depth. Um, so what? This is uh, what, what we're trying to say here is that even if you have like more reliable infrastructure, sometimes just the choices of your architecture actually have more of a consequence than the SLOs of the underlying uh, systems. Um, what about if we make them parallel? Does that change things? Well, actually, no, not really. As long as we still need all four services, the math is essentially the same. Um, here it says depth, but it might as well say width or breadth or something like that. Essentially, the, the number of uh, requ required backends is what you're raising your SLO to. Um, and so we can see in the bottom right, we can actually apply this to services that have different numbers of nines as well. And we still end up with kind of bad outcomes. So uh, this model will help our latency, but it doesn't help our availability. Okay, so what if we have redundant services? Here we go, now, now we're talking here. Um, if we have multiple copies of the same service uh, that can all answer the same question for us, then we're in good shape. Uh, this presumes that the system has like retries and stuff, but let's just ignore that. So in this case, if you have four dice and you throw them, you'd have to th roll four ones in order for the system to be down. Uh, the, the odds of that are astonishingly small. You can see it's 0 0.00077. So in order to calculate that, we have a, a new formula here. Um, and in this case, if we applied it to a system that had three nines, we actually get 12 nines of availability. That's amazing. Um, remember, this is a greatly simplified model. Okay, so uh, this comes us, uh, brings us to what we call like a set theory of SLOs. Um, we can have two models of services or uh, sort of sets of services. One where we require all the dependencies to be met that's intersectional availability. And the other is when we just need at least one of a dependency to be available. 
we can call that union availability. Uh, here's a chart that we should, that shows the theoretical outcome. I'm sorry, the theoretical outcome of many services under each regime. I know which one I would I would want to pick. So what's the problem? Um, why aren't we swimming in nines? Why don't we have 11 nine services today? Uh, turns out uh, things like the network and load balancing are a bottleneck. They're the linchpin. They're, we don't own them most of the time on, on cloud systems. They're hard to fix. Uh, they tend to be big. Um, also, we tend to shoot ourselves in the foot a lot. Uh, so changes, mistakes, taking shortcuts, um, lacking testing. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why our systems might go down that we caused ourselves. And finally, one of the biggest problems is, frankly, when we do have outages, we often don't learn from them very well, uh, or at least we don't learn from them very deeply. Um, often there's a tendency to, to aim for the, the quickest resolution or the, or the, the most understandable um, solution to a problem. But really, uh, I want to encourage everyone to, to focus on the details of an outage, because uh, that's actually what really matters. That's the thing that needs to be fixed, is those details. Okay, so what? Um, don't worry too much about the downward implications of your SLO choices. Um, make sure you focus on your customer happiness. Okay, if you set the right goals at the top, then the rest of your stack will work to uh, accomplish those. And we'll see how that works in just a second. Um, and make sure that you help the infrastructure teams all understand this new world if, if, they're, if they're not really um, catching on already. Uh, resilient software can make infrastructure easier. Uh, make sure that you own the problem end to end as a team. Okay, so here's two models you could use. Uh, one I call stacks. And the idea here is that you can take uh, sort of a, a traditional model and you can just make copies of it in many places in the world. And if you lose one, no problem. Uh, we can take advantage of load balancing in this case, and we can we can use... Um, the, the equation that we had near the top. Um, the other model is, is one that we call full mesh. Um, this one is a lot harder to accomplish, but it gives you lots of um, functionality and it gives you lots of ways to do things like draining and spilling, um, but there's a lot of uh, cost to it as well, technically, or, or more around uh, operational and cognitive costs as well. Um, so, uh, I don't recommend things, other models like a YOLO model, which is basically like figure it out yourself and just kind of make it up. Um, I recommend following one of the, the ones that I pointed out before or, or make up your own model, but at least have a model in mind. Um, there's also the, the idea of a megalith where you're essentially, like you have a single monolith and you're just spreading it around the world. Um, and if anything fails anywhere, the whole thing fails, obviously not a good idea. Um, if you want to go for maximum resilience, obviously the, the full mesh is, is, the, is the best in terms of uh, capability, uh, but it costs a lot um, in terms of computers and storage and networking. Uh, there's up, uh, operational complexity. Um, there's uh, a lot of like side effects to um, the consistency, the sharding, um, replication of your data. It, it gets really complicated. Um, so here's a bunch of other things you could read about. Um, I'm not able to go and do it all here, but uh, you get the idea. It's It's tricky, but it is a good North Star to sort of aim for. Okay. Um, so Steve, that's ridiculous. That's too easy. That can't be right. Uh, you're totally right. So uh, one thing we mentioned before was that, uh, you know, SLOs in this pyramid model, they were getting, you know, harder and harder as you, as you get down. Uh, that's not the case. So in the upside down pyramid, uh, the bottom of the pyramid actually is, has a looser SLO, right? You can actually have machines that fail all the time and the services in the top are still up. How does that even work? Uh, so we call this resilience via engineering. So uh, you're able to build more reliable things on top of less reliable things. Uh, I hope if you remember anything from this talk, it's that um, it is possible to build more reliable things on top of less reliable things. Um, and the other thing that we're kind of assuming is that you actually control the entire stack. So um, the, way, the reason why we don't have 11 nines is because we don't actually control the whole thing. Um, in fact, you don't own things like the load balancer. You don't own things like the network to the endpoint. If you're talking about people on their phones, um, you don't you own the phones themselves, right? The, the phones can fail. Um, so the end-to-end -end experience very rarely will come even anywhere near a level 11 nines, um, more like four or five nines um, due to these physical restrictions. So uh, this, is, this is the point that, again, I want you to, to bring home with you. Um, if you haven't seen Yaniv's talk, um, please check it out, the, the SRE I aspire to be. Uh, this is from SRECon uh, EMEA 2019. Uh, so in here, he talks about how you build these reliable things uh, on top of less reliable things. Uh, this, this, is, this is a great point. Um, okay, so in final closing, I hope I made it in time. Um, a colleague was looking at these slides for me and she said, uh, when should you define SLO for a system versus its components? And I thought, exactly, that's that's kind of the whole point of this is that um, 
I want you to design the SLO for a system at the front door. Um, you don't want to break up the system based on Conway's law. You don't want to break it up based on where the manager is or which team owns which part. Um, try to think about the team, um, or sorry, the, the system boundaries in terms of scalability or you know where the data is replicated, things like that. Um, try not to get frustrated by potential bad math, right? That we already talked about that um, would prevent you from, from making good choices. And in the end, um, build a platform that lets you focus on customer happiness. And I promise uh, all else will follow. The end. I hope that was good.